Hi Pisces, Val's sitting in, she's got hay fever, as you can see, you gonna do a big sneezies? I didn't know that cats actually got hay fever, but honest to God, every springtime, you do, don't you sweetheart, you get hay fever. So there may be some cat sneezes in the background, lovely Pisces. This is your June reading from one Pisces to all of my lovely, I was going to say my fishy friends, but that just does not sound very nice, does it? To all of my Piscean, to all you fish out there, let's put it that way, or all you mermaids. What do you prefer, mermaid or fish? Let me know in the comments section. You ready, Val? She's got like an ear twitch thing going on. Oof. We're going to look at your love life. We're going to look at your, just what's going on for you. Messages about what's coming up, about where you're at at the moment. I'm going to take two cards for that first. Ooh. Nice. Nice. Oh, hey up. Hey up. What's going on, Pisces? Right. We've got the King of Wands. Chicka chicka. I don't know. Oh yeah, that's quite cool. The logo. He's got like the Wands logo on his t-shirt. He's he's got the tats. He's quite hench. King of Wands is that kind of a guy. If you're seeing it in that way, you know, it's someone who could be quite charismatic. Someone who's quite good at dancing. Somebody who's at home in their own body. There you go. I'm doing my dance. Dad at the wedding dance. Always, always, always the dad at the wedding dance. Now, looky here, you're not satisfied enough with one king, you're going to get two. Very, and someone's going to start their motorbike. Of course, they are. Maybe a drill could start up in a moment. We've got King of Wands, we've got the King of Cups, we've got these two together. Pisces, what's going on with you? Are these two going to have a fight? Put some jelly, whack out a bikini, you know, get into the ring. Um, I do sense a bit of competition here, actually. I do sense that for some of you, this might be to do with romantic things with your love life. Um, it can mean that there's two people, that there's one person who is more, where there's a chemical attraction and, you know, it's woohoo, chicka chicka. And then the other one where it's much more of a soul connection and much more of a quieter thing. Let's take some more cards. I'm using two different decks alternately which is good god don't you hate it with motorbikes right if you have a motorbike start the thing and ride away but they don't they always have to sort of chug it over for ages oh yeah there's two of them one of them's got a jack daniels thing on the back of his top they're going to talk about brakes or something like for ages before they actually do it woman across the road's got uh, going in with her mum she's got really good looking takeout coffees thank you very much i'll have one of those right pisces back to it Ooh. okay let's have a look at the cards bit wonky but you're a pisces you're not going to be too fussed okay You've now got the moon and the eight of pentacles. The moon is a Pisces card. In, in tarot, that particular card is aligned with Pisces. Also rules cancer, the other water sign. This is the subconscious, stuff coming up from the subconscious. So Pisces, you've got the eight of pentacles, which is very different to the moon because the moon is like dredging things out of the lake. You know, very Piscean. Eight of pentacles is sun in Virgo, your opposite sign. And it's somebody who's like, I make my pentacles, he's Australian-ish, I make my pentacles, I hammer them out, and then I put them on the wall every day. I don't know what the word they would use then is. Fear dinkum, fear dinkum. So it's an eight, so it's a movement, and it, it's work. This is putting something out there, externalizing. Some of you might be, for example, writing poetry or something about people that you've dated before. You're dredging up the details of your first love. You know, it's that kind of energy. This means, and this is true of every Piscean as well, whatever you're knocking out in the day, whatever you're doing, whether you're knocking out stories or you're knocking out 
um, pies in a restaurant or whatever you're doing as a job, it must bring something up from the subconscious for you. It's what Pisces likes to do. Not the same as Scorpio. Scorpio goes down into the bottom of the well and makes us uh, conscious of the subconscious. Pisces hints at it. That's why so many poets are Piscean. Go look. For some of you, that's about love life. We'll have a get a look in a minute. Oh, I can't speak today. We'll have a look in a minute specifically at your love life. For others of you, it's about being inspired, being inspired by who excites you, who your soul connection is with. For some of you as well, you may just be thinking about somebody at the moment. I don't know if they're disconnected from you. I don't know whatever it is. We're going to look at it in love life, but there's a sense by which you could, if you wanted to, wake the dragon. Gosh, it's all over the place you're reading. All over the chutney. But actually, as a Pisces, you're better chasing the chaos than you are the neatness. Pisceans are not neat. Leave me a comment. Tell me how messy you are. Occasionally, and I'm going to go out on a limb here and say more March than February Pisces, you'll get Pisceans who move over into their Virgo opposite side and are really quite tidy, but not many. Not many. Okay, we've got some Queens joining the action. We've got the Queen of Swords. And the Six of Swords. Okay, Pisces. Whether it's your love life, your work life, your life life, and this is a constant... I would say, I suppose, battle or learning curve, if you want to be kinder, for Pisceans, you need to get your boundaries in check. Pisces is a sign that is renowned for not having any boundaries or at least not having very solid boundaries. I've said this before and I will say it again as a double Pisces myself you sh probably shouldn't seek to enforce external boundaries where you think, yes, I need to, I don't know, eat less chocolate. I'm going to put that in place. Never works for a Piscean in my experience. Just my experience <coughs> after eight. Like this. Start tomorrow. <laughs> my diet starts tomorrow. Um, not into diets, actually, but my giving up of after eights always seems to have to start tomorrow and then never does. With Pisces, our boundaries, whether it's about, you know, eating too much chocolate or somebody you can't forget or whatever it is, are more like ropes in the sea that go down to an anchor. OK, they swing around, they drift about, they're harder to pin down. Your boundaries as a Pisces are probably quite internal. OK, if this resonates, there will be an extended reading, by the way, when we get to the end and we've done the love life bit, what I do then at the end of the reading, if it resonates, we go on. I sometimes do another love reading for the extended reading, like I pull a whole new set of cards out for it. Um, or I also clarify what we already got and we dig further and we do, um, we get another cup of coffee and we channel messages from your person, ask how they feel about you, etc. That is the first link in the description box if it resonates by the time you get to the end. Okay. Six of Swords, finding your way out of something. This particular person is climbing. They're climbing a mountain. It's a mountain for a Piscean to be able to get their boundaries in check. The Queen of Swords is the Queen of Boundaries. Some of you need to be exploring your boundaries around particular people, charismatic people, people who talk you into things, but also around what you're doing for a living. And... Ooh, this is your destiny cards. What you're doing for a living and what it means to you to do that. Okay. In other words, does your source of employment or whether you're self-employed, whatever it is, is it something that turns you on? Are you inspired by it? Because if you're not, I don't know, a trapped Pisces is never a good thing. You know, it's a very difficult state for a Pisces to be in as a state of entrapment. So whatever's happening in your work life, it's all about pushing outwards, broadening your horizons. 
if you are stuck in a job that is boring and you can't leave it yet because there are times in our life when you know jobs a job and you think that's fine I'll you know there's nothing else on the horizon then make sure you're doing what's inspirational when you're not at work okay as far as you can destiny we get justice and the six of pentacles these two go really really nicely together and i really like this vibe it's about getting you more now again i was gonna say pisces are more famous for pisces are famous really for not being too bothered about money but that doesn't mean you sell your wisdom and services for nothing okay I know Pisces is kind of represented by the sort of um, the penniless hermit, you know, wandering the land and all the rest of it. But a girl's got to eat Pisces. OK, justice and the six of pentacles is about karma going your way in terms of receiving, receiving, <laughs> receiving. I could not have got a job as an air hostess receiving. The Six of Pentacles is literally, it's a card about giving, but it's also a card about receiving. And I'm not blowing smoke up your tail, but Pisceans are pretty good at giving. And you will find there will be a small throng of people who are quite good at taking, probably around you. But this is important. The universe wants to switch this up and it wants you to receive your due. So you may be at work asking for a pay rise or going through whatever motions it is you need to go through to get out or to get promoted or to get recognized, to raise your status, but actually not just status. He is knocking out pentacles. This person is receiving, this person is giving and receiving, okay? there's a lot of karma for you in June around money and security and saving and investment in yourself. Take it seriously, okay? Have a look. I mean, you can see a financial advisor. Often, you know, very good to see one who's qualified and decent. You can find loads of videos on budgeting, something Pisceans are either very good at or very bad at have a look about money and also think about the energy of money. Pisces is an energy sign. Pisces is not particularly in tune with the clunky objects of real life, all that interested to be honest. But the energy of money, the energy of money and the energy of what you put out when the tide goes out and when the waves push it back in towards you, that's how the sea works. It can't just keep going out because it would disappear, it has to keep coming back. It's like a breath. Think of money like a breath. You put it, you're breathing out, you're breathing in, you're breathing out, you're breathing in. It's a whole reciprocal cycle. Doing a lot of swimming today, Pisces. I like this for you. This hits on your value. And your value, Pisces, whatever you're doing, you are an original thinker. You are bringing things to the table. Very often to have a Pisces on a team means you have a team. Pisces is very good at working with different people and ignoring their faults and just thinking, well, you can do that. You can't do that. I'm not going to push you in that direction. You can't stand that person. I'll make you work with this one instead. Very good at facilitating. Okay. Pisces is the oil in the machine. Just because you don't like stepping up and putting your head above the parapet. Most Pisceans don't really want to be the boss unless it's their own boss and that's different. You still, you have a magic touch and you're a benefit to any workplace, okay? Imagine now when you're asking for your pay rise, you'd be like, I am the oil. I don't know why everybody's half Australian today. In your machine. <laughs> don't try that. Okay, let's look at your love life. I like this though. I like it with the justice, like the, the scales tipping back in your favour. Yes. It's your time, Pisces. Come on. Let's look at your love life. Look at your love life. Val hasn't sneezed. She's gone to sleep. We've got the magician. Yeehaw. 
A magician holding a Bic Biro. That's what I, I like to see. Oh, look at that. We've got Temperance. Now I'm going to take two of the other one, actually. Okay. The Magician. Some of you might be dealing with an air sign. Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. That's what the Magician sometimes means to me. So there could be a group of you there who are dealing with an air sign. Something starting, something getting off the ground, you're talking to somebody, you don't quite know what the status is yet, okay? For some of you, that might be a bit complicated. The magician is also your ability to manifest love, which as a Piscean is absolutely 11 out of 10. So if you haven't tried it already, for the love of God, start doing some love manifestation stuff, stuff. Go and look at Agnes Vivarelli. She's the one I always recommend to everybody, but there are loads of people doing it on YouTube, doing free stuff where you get meditations, not the weird ones, you know, don't be doing anything weird or anything. As a Pisces, use your own like, um, what do they call it? Intuition, I can't think of a better word. And find something that really resonates with you. But at the same time, you can manifest what you want. This is very important. And then we have temperance. Temperance is also an act of magic. It's the act of bringing together two opposites and making them blend into a new energy. So you might already be with somebody who's very much not like you. Your kind of opposites attract. This could be the person you're about to meet. Either way, they're not um, historically your kind of person. Okay, they're not your type. There's nothing wrong with that though. Sometimes, sometimes your type, and have a little think, because you see how we got the King of Cups and the King of Wands. That to me is saying that you're looking in your love life about the patterns from the past, your exes, your type. Very often your type is not that good for you. How has it worked out with your type in the past? Okay. That's the question to ask yourself. Let me just get rid of me a minute. And there's that hermit. So we've got the Four of Swords, which is rather nice. This is peace, understanding. It could be a truce if there's been an argument or some kind of division between you and someone else. We've got the hermit. I don't know if the hermit is you or them. I have a feeling it's you, Pisces. It is your opposite sign of Virgo. Pisces, in my experience, like their alone time. You like someone else to be around, maybe on the phone, you know, maybe on Skype or even in the house, but you want your personal space. Make sure that you not only value your personal space, but act on it, okay? I'll take a couple more cards for your love life. What's coming in for Pisces, please? Love life. June 2024. Ooh, Pisces, some of you are worried. Something is on your mind. I'm getting a vibe here that some of you are, are not receiving a communication that you're wanting from somebody. Yeah. Queen of Coins. The Nine of Swords is when you're up in your head, you're worried, it's the 4am card, you're thinking, you're wondering, you're worrying. Pisces can let off a volley of worry at any given moment. What about this? What about that? What about this? What about that? And it feels like, it feels like that for a lot of you. There's some kind of mystery about the Hermit that you can't solve. Queen of Coins means that you're waiting it out or you've been waiting for a long time for something or somebody and you're wondering if they are ever going to communicate. Take an Oracle card and then we'll take a Love Oracle card. Yeah, the Oracle card you get is to live in the here and now. Very, very important. There may not be answers to a certain of your questions at the moment. There may be a hiatus. Somebody might be hiding. Okay, that's a feeling that I get. Let's take a love oracle card. Gifts. Yes, please, says Pisces. Yes, please. And trust. I'll take a third one, actually. Okay. 
and divine timing. Okay, Pisces. Gifts. Love's greatest gift is the ability to understand each other. And a bottle of molten brown shower gel doesn't go amiss either, can I just say, in a box of Booja truffles. I mean, come on. Sorry. That was my other fish talking. <laughs> She's very materialistic. Um, there's a misunderstanding between you and somebody going on here. I get that. It might be low level. It might be occupying your every waking moment. But there is a level of misunderstanding. Guard your heart. Not everyone deserves your trust. You may be deciding whether or not to trust somebody. You may be looking back with these two kings on your past and your patterns. Um, I want to call them two princes for something. I don't know why. And then we've got divine timing. Trust in divine timing. Love arrives when it's meant to. Okay. Pisces, you live in divine timing. I don't know about you, but I have... I, am, I used to love the word horology, which means sort of study of time, I think, or clocks, something like that. And I have several clocks in my house. There's one on my computer. There's one in the bathroom, which is a zodiac clock, one of those 70s ones that has stars, the 12 zodiac signs. I mean, perfect. The, I've got the microwave clock, the oven clock, and a clock in my garden, and a clock in my car. Every single one of those clocks is nearly, well, most of them are permanently completely wrong. The cooker one works sometimes, but not if you actually cook on it. So every clock I own, every watch I own will stop the time. It doesn't keep time. Pisceans live on divine timing. Okay. If you were BA Baraka, you'd be saying, I don't need no clock. Okay. You don't need it. Trust in the divine timing of the situation that you're in. Things are happening beneath the surface that have not surfaced yet, literally, because that's what beneath the surface means, okay? You don't know everything you need to know at the moment, but you will. You're the queen of coins in this respect. Um, be in the here and now, do what you love to do. Sharpen the points of your boundaries. Or if there are ropes in the sea, just inspect them, make sure they haven't split or something. I'm going to go do the extended reading. Sounds like I'm in the mood for it. We're going to look at the two kings. We're also going to draw you a whole different love reading along with this one. So it takes the points of this one, but we take it further. So I'm going to use shadow decks, more love oracle decks and different tarot decks as well to have a good old dig for you, Pisces. So if you want to join me there, it's the first link in the description box. I'll see you in a minute. I'm just going to refresh my, my brew. Um, leave me a comment. I love to read all my comments and I reply to as many as I can. And I will see you soon. See you on the other side. Namaste.